welcome to another vlog and welcome to my first ever video regarding medical physics. So if you guys want to learn more, just keep on watching. So I will start my vlog by explaining what is medical physics. So medical physics is the application of the collective understanding of physics concepts, theories, and calculation to improve the diagnosis or treatment of certain diseases, especially cancer. In medical physics, we deal with different radiation devices. We also deal with different types of radiation like alpha, beta, gamma, the ultraviolet rays, and other non-ionizing radiation. So for the simplest explanation about medical physics, medical physics is the application of physics principles, concepts, theories, and calculations in the field of medicine and research for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of human diseases such as cancer with a specific goal of improving human health. A person practicing medical physics is called medical physicist. Medical physicists are individuals who have undergone necessary training and education in applying physics in the field of medicine. These competent individuals are part of a clinical team. They are responsible for providing an extensive knowledge about radiation as well as the safe use of radiation for the detection, diagnosis, treatment, and cure of cancer. So, paano nga ba maging medical physicist? I will show you a flowchart here from the IAEA kung paano maging medical physicist. So, may dalawang track siya. So, first, of course, you need to go bachel your bachelor's and then your master's and then residency and then your certification. So, yun yung usual na track na talagang ginagawa. And then, yung second is yung mag-PhD ka sa isang physics course, yung pure physics, like theoretical, and then magtitake ka ng complete academic courses ng medical physics. So, talagang required na mag-enroll ng medical physics subjects. And then, you will go to a residency program then and then certification as well. So, I will go through all of it in this vlog. So, as I said a while ago, I will be explaining yung steps kung paano maging medical physicist. So, yung first step natin dun sa usual na track is yung bachelor's. So, ano yung mga courses na pwede mong itake para maging medical physicist ka? So, of course, first natin is yung BS Physics. Yung major mo er, or yung pure na physics talaga tinatanggap siya. Of course. Then, yung second is yung BS Physics for Teachers. Pinatanggap din to. Pangatlo, BS Applied Physics. So, depende na lang kung yung BS Applied Physics mo is with specialization siya in medical instrumentation or may minor ka ng instrumentation or may health physics ka. So, any of these choices, pasok siya. Anything na yung major mo talaga nung college is physics. Pinatanggap talaga siya. Okay, so hindi naman siya purely physics lang yung tinatanggap. So tumatanggap din siya ng BS Chem at BS Engineering. As long as meron kang 12 units ng physics up to modern physics as well as 21 units ng mathematics. So ano yung mga mathematics na kailangan meron ka? So first, kailangan meron kang algebra, meron kang trigonometry, Meron kang derivative calculus, meron kang integral calculus, meron kang differential equation, and of course, yung last, yung vector analysis. Dapat may mga subjects kang ganun. So, ayun yung mga requirements or yun yung mga kailangan na na-attain mo sa bachelor's mo para makapunta ka sa next step, which is yung masteral. So, so second step natin is master's. So, ano yung mga requirements para magkaroon ka ng master's degree or ano yung mga kailangan? FYI lang, isa lang sa buong Pilipinas ang nag offer ng medical physics as of the moment, which is University of Santo Tomas. So, almost lahat or lahat ng medical physics na kilala ko or na established na is galing sa UST or dumaan sa UST. Once na enroll ka na sa UST, madami ka ng medical physicists na makikilala. Whether nag-work sila sa clinical setting, sa industry, or sa research facilities, makikilala mo sila since yung iba magiging classmate mo pa sila. Then, yung mga pillars or yung mga legendary na ng medical physicists dito sa Pilipinas, mamimit mo din sila since they are 
props sa USP or sila talaga yung madadaanan mo on your way kasi sila yung mga nagtuturo ng mga subjects dito sa USP. So, ano yung mga subjects na mga kailangan mo i-expect na matuturo sa'yo or na matitake mo once na nag-masters ka na? Sa USP kasi, merong parang five major requirements siya para makagraduate ka ng course. So, meron tayong tinatawag na prerequisite course or yung mga subjects. Meron kang core subjects, merong major subjects, merong cognate subjects and then yung mga ibang requirements mo pa. So first, yung mga prerequisite subjects mo. So total of 6 units siya kasi dalawa yung subject niya. So tig-tatlong units siya. So yung first mo is yung tinatawag na St. Thomas and critical thinking. So lahat ata ng UST students, if I'm not mistaken, nagte-take talaga nito. Yung pangalawa naman is research methodology with instrumentation. So ito more on magagamit mo na siya sa mga research or sa thesis mo talaga. And then second natin is yung core subjects. So yung core subjects is pinaka foundation ng mismo uh, physics course mo or yung physics masters mo. So first of course radiation physics. Radiation physics yung pinaka parang kailangan mo talaga mapasa or kailangan mo matake within your master's degree since ito, madami talaga siyang prerequisite sa buong master. So, first niyang prereq is radiation dosimetry and then yung pangalawa, radiation therapy. So, kailangan mo talaga siyang matake. And of course, lahat ng medical thesis is kailangan makapag-aral ng radiation physics. So, pangalawa, introduction to life science naman. More on anatomy and biology siya na subject. And then, pangatlo mo is biostatistics, which is helpful kapag mag-research ka na or nagtitesis ka na. Okay. After that, meron kang anim na major subjects. So, yung major subjects naman is 17 units. So, pangatlo na to sa requirements. So, major units. So, yung mga matitake mo, radiation protection, radiation biology, physics of diagnostic radiology, merong physics of radiation therapy, merong physics of nuclear medicine, and of course, meron kang radiation dosimetry. So, yung, ta yung anim na yon yung pinaka- major subjects mo within your stay sa UST. And then lastly, meron kang four yung cognate mo na subjects which are physics of ultrasound and non-ionizing radiation protection. So, so Pilipinas, bonus talaga yung meron kang ganyang subjects. And then after that, yung fifth which is the fifth requirement is yung written comprehensive exam. Dapat syempre mapasa mo siya in order for you to take yung tatlong TC subjects. So TW1 which is Proposal mo, paper, TW2 which is colloquium which you present like 70% of your studies na or your results. And then of course, yung thesis defense mo. While you're taking your master's degree, of course, pwede kang sumali sa isang org na recognized ng regulatory body which is Society of Medical Physicists in the Republic of the Philippines. So, SMPRP. So, isa siyang org na recognize ng regulatory body as I said. And then dito, pwede kang maka-attend ng conventions nila or ng mga forums or gatherings about medical physics. And syempre, makikilala mo din yung mga medical physics na nandito sa field. And then, there are mga facilities, hospitals, clinics, research facilities, or even industry or companies na mag nag hire ng mga medical physicists na may certain units or may certain number of units na sa medical physics na program ng UST. Pwede din naman or huge advantage pa rin syempre kapag nakagraduate ka na nung mismong master's mo. Pero on the process of it, pwede ka naman maging medical physics while you're taking your master's. Usually naman talaga sa master's, nag-work na yung mga tao. Of course, meron ka pa ding option, pwede maging scholar sa UST or pwede ipon mo lang. Lagay mo sa master's ka na. <laughs> Okay, so let's assume na tapos ka na sa bachelor's mo and sa master's mo. So yung third step natin is the residency program. So as I said a while ago, madami na kasing medical physicists na naka-hire before they graduate. However, kapag nag-residency ka kasi, required or kailangan mo ng facility or ng environment where you can do the residency program. So usually talaga mga hired na individuals yung natitake. However, Konti lang yung uh, residency advisors na nag accept ng hindi pag-graduate. Kasi syempre, mas okay naman if tapos mo na yung master's mo para mas makafocus ka dun sa residency program mo. So, on, so pwede ka naman mag-residency while taking your master's but it's unlikely to happen and low chances na may mag-accept sa'yo na advisor para, mag, para dun sa residency program mo since 
syempre, mas okay pag-graduate. So, sa Pilipinas kasi, meron tayong boards 14 subspecialty of medical physicists. So, we have Diagnostic Radiology, which is DRIP. We have Radiation Oncology, which is ROMP. And we have Nuclear Medicine, which is NIM. So, yung tatlong yun, may boards siya for residency. Yung pinaka-established sa kanya is yung Radiation Oncology. So, if I'm not mistaken, it's for, it's going for 10 years na siya. Parang nag-celebrate sila last year ng residency program nila. And then, yung DRIP, meron na siyang isang batch as well. So, ano yung ina-expect mo? So, of course, first, meron kang modules. So, yung modules na yon may iba't iba siyang tasks na kailangan mo gawin or if, parang mga exams na gawin. And then, you will submit it and you will create a portfolio for yourself. You will submit your portfolio to a certain board. Yung board nung subspecialty na ina-applyan mo. So, this is of three person. So, sa ROP, four now. Kasi yung tayo ng highest. And then, meron tayong isa na external or international expert as well. So, bale, three, parang four to five persons yung mag-evaluate sa'yo for the certification. So, sa Radiation Oncology, dito ko lang siya ibibase kasi ito yung pinaka-established as of the moment. So, by batches kasi siya and yung progress niya in a planned manner. So, yung uh, mga taong nag-apply, they are sharing the same program duration with the whole batch and they date and they take the exam at a certain specific time. Since, syempre, you will have an exam administered by an international expert. Ano yung mga exam mo? Meron kang written, meron kang oral, and meron kang hands-on na exam. Yung magiging portfolio mo, syempre, kailangan na-check na siya ng supervisor mo. May mga signatures and everything. And then, once you complete everything, you pass the exam, completed the module, then you will become a clinically qualified medical physician. So, let's assume that you finish everything. The bachelor's, the master's, the residency, and now you're a clinically qualified medical physician here in the Philippines. So, what are its advantages? So, kasi sa Pilipinas, wala tayong PRC license for medical physics. Why? Because sa medical physics is still a growing uh, field dito sa Pilipinas. First of all, isa pa lang university na nag-offer ng master's niya. So, required kasi sa PRC na may certain number of universities na nag-offer as well as yung number of graduates na natatapos dun sa program, kailangan din medyo madami para magkaroon ka ng license. So, yung pinaka-license mo dito sa medical physics is yung certification mo to become a CQMP, which is a clinically qualified medical physicist. So, what are its advantages? So, yung advantage mo is First, pwede ka na makasama dun sa board for the residency program. And then, for, second is yung pinaka-important, acknowledge na yung mga documents, signatures, or mga gagawin mo or yung pagiging medical physicist mo ng regulatory body. So, what are the documents you can create? So, first, pwede ka magawa ng linak bunker plans. Pwede ka mag-test ng machines nyo or mag-perform ng QA. And then, there generally accepted ka na nung regulator as a requirement for radiation facilities. So, meron ng parang pinaka license ka na pumirma, na gumawa, and ano, tatanggapin yon nung mismong regulatory body ng Pilipinas, which is CDRRHR from FDA. Another option naman, once na clinically qualified medical physics, medical physicist ka na, is to create your own own consultancy service, whether sa devices or sa QA, pwede ka na mag-create. Therefore, guys, medical physics is still a growing field here in the Philippines and that's it for this vlog. Madami pa akong medical physics videos na i-release soon, so please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you guys like this video, please don't forget to click the like button and if medyo naguluhan ka or if you need some clarifications, or answers to your questions, please don't hesitate to comment it down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye, bye, bye!